Hello, Malcolm here. In this week's video, we're going to look at Japanese aircraft surrender schemes in the immediate post-war period. Most of the aircraft we look at will be those surrendered to Australian or New Zealand forces. With the sudden end to hostilities in the Pacific came Allied directives prescribing that the Japanese were to paint surrendered aircraft white overall. Markings were to be a green cross on a white background painted in place of the red Hinomaru. The schemes sometimes deviated significantly from the officially specified surrender scheme. Such a scheme was important to identify Japanese aircraft flown by Japanese crew on authorized transport duties and those bringing Japanese surrender delegations into the various Allied operational headquarters. For aircraft surrendered to Australian forces in New Guinea and the Netherlands East Indies, this meant Labuan Island off the north coast of Borneo. Labuan had been occupied by the Royal Australian Air Force since the 10th of June 1945, and although most Japanese aircraft had been withdrawn by August 1944 to the Philippines, a few remained in the area to appear in surrender schemes. While the Royal Australian Air Force acquired various surrendered aircraft at its bases north of Australia, the Royal New Zealand Air Force obtained some mainly Japanese Navy aircraft from surrendered Japanese forces in the Solomon Islands, northeast of New Guinea. I'm going to cover some types surrendered to Australian forces first and then get on with the New Zealand ones. Now this first photograph is of a Tachigawa Ki-54 Hickory, a light transport that carried the Japanese General Baba and his surrender delegation from North Borneo to Labuan Island in September 1945. Now this was for the Japanese formal surrender to Major General Wooten, who was the General Officer commanding the 9th Division Australian Infantry Force. The aircraft appears to be camouflaged in a green scribble pattern over natural metal. The crude surrender crosses are painted over the fuselage Hinamaru, but inboard of them under the wing. Now, although the Allies specified the surrender crosses were to be green, well, these ones are white. We're now looking at a portside view of the same Ki-54 on Labuan Island. This aircraft was subsequently flown to Australia by an RAAF crew. Please note that one source I have does say that it was shipped. The fuselage of this aircraft survived and came into the hands of the RAAF Museum at Point Cook in Victoria in 1980. It was subsequently passed to the National War Memorial Museum in Canberra. As a crew trainer and light transport, the Ki-54 was the most successful design and 368 were built between 1940 and 1945. In this third photo of the Ki-54, if we look closely at the upper wing, we can see the white surrender cross inboard of the Hinamaru. Also on the Buen was this Japanese Army Air Force Mitsubishi Ki-21 Sally. Uh, this bomber has the correct white surrender scheme with green crosses. It also retains the badge of the headquarters flight of the 3rd Kokoga on the tail. Being outclassed as a bomber by the later stages of the war, such aircraft that survived were still used as headquarters communications machine. This Ki-21 was also taken to Australia, but its fate is unknown. Next up, we have a Mitsubishi Ki-51 Sonya of the Japanese Army Air Force, also on Lemuan Island. Now we can see some Royal Australian Air Force boomerangs in the photo. This two-seat ground attack and tactical reconnaissance aircraft was test flown by Australian pilots of No. 4 Squadron and No. 1 Squadron. I'm sure it was fun for them. Appearing on screen now is a port side illustration of this aircraft. Uh, we can see that it still has its green colour scheme, but it has an abbreviated version of the surrender scheme with green crosses with white outlines. Note also that above and below the wings, it has green crosses with white outlines superimposed on the Hinamarus. Although this is a very poor quality image, I'm including it anyway. This is a Tachikawa Ki-36 Ida. Uh, these aircraft were designed for Army cooperation duties at the front line. This one was acquired by Australian troops and displays another variation of surrender markings. 
although the image is of poor quality, an Australian soldier can be seen standing on the port wing adjacent to the cockpit. Now I'll move on to aircraft captured by the RNZAF. The New Zealanders mainly captured Japanese Navy types, which were surrendered by Japanese forces throughout the Solomon Island chain, northeast of New Guinea. A few days after the war ended, RNZAF intelligence learned that an airworthy Zero located at Kara airstrip in southern Bougainville existed. This was in the New Zealanders' operational area. RNZAF personnel visited the strip on the 14th of September and found that the aircraft did indeed exist and was serviceable. This aircraft, which was given the temporary serial number of NZ6000, still exists. It is the only Type 220 surviving and is currently in the Auckland War Memorial Museum. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stream out the photographs I have of the aircraft. I'll put up captions on them as required uh, and I'll just let the photos stream across your screen as I, uh, as I read the story. The aircraft had been caught on the ground by Allied bombers during the American landings at Empress Augusta Bay, Bougainville in November 1943. Serious damage had prevented the Zero being flown out to Rabaul and it had been hidden at Kara airstrip since that time. The Japanese decided to make the Zero airworthy as a morale-boosting exercise, with over 60 technical personnel available and a variety of other Zero airframes for parts. The machine was soon in the flying order, utilising the front half of airframe 3835 and the rear of airframe 3844. Petty Officer Sikaisen Shabayama was flown from Rabaul to Bougainville at the end of July 1945 in a Jake float plane to fly the Zero back to Rabaul. However, the tide of war caught up with this program and the Zero stayed on the ground. Post-war and this Zero flies again. Wing Commander Bill Coford of the RNZAF decided that he wished to see and hopefully fly the infamous Zero. Therefore, on the morning of the 15th of September, he and Engineer Officer C.D. Kingsford flew in a Wirraway of No. 5 Squadron RAAF to Kara Airstrip. Coford and Kingsford inspected the aircraft and the Japanese pilot answered their queries as best he could. All equipment seemed to be well built and working. On the strength of this and his own impressions, Coford decided to fly the Zero northwest to the RNZA field headquarters at Piva, Bougainville. Air Commodore G. N. Roberts, the air officer commanding the New Zealand Air Task Force, was among those to inspect the aircraft back at Piva. Although no later flights were attempted at Piva, the engine was run up several times. The RNZAF also acquired three Type 52 Zeros. On the 18th of September 1945, four Japanese aircraft with an escort of RNZAF Corsairs were flown by Japanese crews into the RNZAF base at Jackano Bay, New Britain Island. The group comprised three A6M5 Type 52 Zeros. Two of these were serial numbers 3479 and 4043. The fourth aircraft in the group was a Mitsubishi Ki-46 Diner, serial number 2783. Note in the photograph above what appear to be correctly applied surrender schemes with white paint overall, fairly thinly applied of course, plus the green crosses. Also in the background we see a group of Japanese personnel. The next two photographs show one of the Type 52 Zeros that was retained by the RNZAF for pilots to take for joy rides. The other two Zeros, which flew into Jackano Bay at the same time, were given to the Australians. And here's the second photo of the Type 52 Zero retained for joy riding, uh, this time being serviced by RNZAF ground crew members. Note how this particular aircraft seems to have a surprisingly dense application of white paint. And now moving on to the diner. 
This Mitsubishi KI-46-2 reconnaissance aircraft unfortunately damaged its undercarriage when landing at Jackano Bay, so uh, it was no longer suitable for flying, or perhaps that should be said, no longer suitable for joyriding post-war. Note the green crosses of the surrender scheme are painted alongside the Hinamarus rather than over them as specified in the surrender scheme. And on the side of the fuselage, the Hinamaru still exists, and the green cross is in front of it. And here is the second photograph of the Surrender Scheme Diner. This time it's at number 10 Servicing Unit, Workshop, Tent and Buildings Area at Jackano Bay in October 1945. The PV-1 Ventura in the photograph is of number 2 Bomber Reconnaissance Squadron. The Venturas were generally lined up on both sides of the runway to the left of this picture. The Nakajima B-5N Kate on the right of this picture also flew into Jackano Bay in September of 1945. For some reason, it did not wear a surrender scheme and, luckily for the crew, it was not shot down. Moving on to the RNZAF acquired Aichi E-13A1 Jake float plane. This aircraft was flown into Jackano Bay on the 14th of October in 1945. This first photograph is rather poor quality but shows it not long after arrival still floating in the harbour where it remained until it developed a leak in one of its floats. This second photograph shows the Jake at a later date after it has been dragged ashore. Note that the engine bay now has a canvas cover protecting it. Of particular interest to us is that the surrender scheme includes a dense layer of white paint having been applied over the Hinamarus on the fuselage and under the wings before the green crosses have been added. It's quite distinctive. It's also possible that on the undersides of the wing there is no white paint around the Hinamaru and hence this is the reason for the contrast. My illustration shows this possibility. To finish off, I'm putting up two extra photos of one of the Mitsubishi Bettys that flew into Okinawa on the way to Manila with a surrender delegation. Uh, these two photos are not, of course, aircraft that were surrendered to Australian or New Zealand forces, but interesting nevertheless. Uh, please do like and subscribe to my channel, as it certainly helps me build it. Okay, bye for now.